Yeah, what got me here? Um, okay, well, my drug of choice was alcohol. Um, I had not been like a lifelong abuser, just more like a recreational, you know, discovered it in college and of course did my fair share of binge drinking. Um, fortune brought me to Colorado where I got to live a, a ski bum life and there's when it sort of developed into weekdays as well as weekends. And as you know, alcohol is a depressant and then I started kind of isolating and sort of shrinking away from my family um, and drinking more and more. Uh, I went through um, a 12-step program. It was one week, right? It was a couple days of detox and then five days of meetings and then they kind of kick you out and they say, go to meetings and do that for the rest of your life and you'll, you know, you'll be sober. They didn't tell me that I would be sober and unhappy, right? So I got about six months of what we call white knuckle sobriety out of that. In other words, force of will. Therefore, I relapsed, right? And um, I was kind of off and on drinking for a month, not drinking for a month, somehow managing to not get a DUI and not get fired, but just tumbling into this dark hole. So we have to do something, right? The wife and I both agreed. And all I knew was I didn't want to do what I did before because it didn't work. And you know, I don't want to get too spiritual about it, but this is the best thing that ever happened to me, for real. And I'm not saying that because there's a camera here or you know, for any ulterior motive. Even if I did not have the problem I had with substance abuse, the problems that I had with loving myself and how I was approaching life, that would have been enough reason for me to go through this program. Because that, the stuff that was at the bottom of my, you know, terrible behavior, both in myself and in my loved ones, um, is what we talk about here. And what? has gotten infinitely better and put me more at peace. The reality starts to kind of sink in a little bit like, oh my God, okay, I did the thing that I would, said I was going to do and now I'm here and now, oh my God, what are the next two months going to be like? And then Maria, the nurse, came out and instantly I felt like a, a sense of calm and she was so gentle and so attentive and I was so grateful. And again, this was only the second person that I met from Gulf Breeze and they both had something in common, which was I felt they cared about me. Yeah, Maria's got a special place in my heart because she was the first one to, to you know, take care of me and, and to treat me like a human being, which I didn't get at the facility that I had tried, you know, a few years back. They treated me, I was a prisoner, basically, right? <laughs> you know, the way we're treated, you know, with dignity and respect and love, honestly. You know, to be truthful, the folks that work here work here because they want to. And I've heard that from their mouths multiple times. Um, there's a sense of we're all in this together, you know. A lot of the staff here have been through what we've gone through. It wasn't sitting in a class, taking a note, thinking about it, and then applying it. It was hearing different flavors of, you know, a message, which is... You know, it's, it's kind of in you, right? Something clicks. It's difficult to quantify. But it worked for me as it worked for a lot of the folks that I've been in this program with is you just sort of realize spontaneously that you have a lot more control over your happiness than you thought you did. And there's a freedom with that. There is a, there's a sense of calm that has come over me just in the last, in the tail end of this, you know, enterprise, this, this journey that I've been on. This has been transformative for me and has given me my life back. And when I've talked to, uh, to my wife on the phone or to my mom, they have been moved to tears and said, oh my God, it's so good to have like Reggie back. I haven't heard that giggle in 10 years. And that's a good feeling. The guy that walked in here seven weeks ago was a mess somehow by just by kind of letting go of the reins and, and allowing these, these wonderful people to guide me through this healing. The change has been tectonic in my life. Um, and it, it sometimes is a struggle to put into words, but it's good to know that I can healthily, right, not force it, but with good conscience and from a place of compassion for myself, close that chapter, right? 
of the book of my life and move on to, you know, act two with tools that I didn't possess and, uh, you know, a, a confidence and a, and a comfort with myself that I didn't possess prior to coming here. And I think not having that and, and seeing your behavior and feeling out of control and let's face it, hating yourself and judging yourself, that was perpetuating the problem. And these, these guys here helped me put all of that aside. What we did was we just restored my overall health, my, my mental perspectives changed through going through this program. And that's why I don't have to say I'm an alcoholic. I can say I had a drinking problem, yeah, big time. But that's the old me. And that was like a happy moment. Like, oh my God, huh. I just realized, you know, that, that thing that I had been thinking about myself for so long, I don't believe that anymore. When you understand something intuitively and deeply like that, you, you don't lose it. The greatest blessing is that my children are four and five, and they'll only get to know, they'll only get to know, pardon me, um, the awesome me. I'm hoping that they'll forget the short-tempered, sort of irritable, not present one that got on the plane that they said goodbye to. Um, but that's, that's the greatest gift, right? I wasn't drinking because being drunk all the time and having a drink in the morning to keep from puking is a great lifestyle. I was doing that because I felt that's what I deserved, right? What I learned here is that was not true. I, and this will be weird to say this out loud because the guy that walked in here could never have done this, never in a thousand years would have said the opposite. But I am worthy of the love and compassion that the people around me have been trying to give me that I've been, right? And that thing, that, those things that I had been doing, that person that I was, no longer gets to define me. <sighs> Man. I'm a relief. I, I couldn't have done it without this place. While my family was upstairs, right? My beautiful wife who loves the hell out of me. My two children who think I hung the moon were upstairs playing and laughing. And I was in the basement drinking vodka, playing video games, isolating, pissing in an empty vodka bottle because I didn't want to go upstairs and have people see me. I went from that to this. In eight weeks, thank God I came here when I did because I still have some time to gobble up a lot of life and a lot of love and to be present for my kids. And I, I couldn't have done it without this place, without the combination of all these people around me that truly do care, that helped me get there and the time in which to do it. I guess what I would say to like a, you know, a prospective guest, right? Somebody who's, who's thinking about this place seriously and has hesitation that I did right particularly around the duration you know in my mind I had pictured things that I was going to get out of this but the actual experience exceeded any of the I mean I couldn't even conceive of the change that would happen to me through this process.